Here's Reinman in the Morning, on demand from 1021 and 1053, The Shark. It's time for your News on the Nines with News Guy. Yesterday, Chris Christie compared Donald Trump to a child. But today, Christie issued a sincere apology to children. Today is National Take Your Cat to Work Day. Unless you work at a bird sanctuary or run a laser tag center. A United and a Delta plane clipped wings on the runway at Logan Airport. So to be safe, Southwest Airlines is removing all wings. And that's your news on the nines. Now on Rhyming in the Morning, it's What's Up on the Shark app with Megan, the Shark's own app and website guru. Megan, what's going on? New Hampshire has over 3,000 restaurants, but I decided to go on a quest to find some of the best farm-to-table restaurants in New Hampshire, or field-to-fork, as you will. Field-to-fork. That's a new one. Yeah. Nice okay. use of alliteration. There. How many did you come up with? 20. Oh, 20. Yeah. Well, one 20. of them I actually one of them I actually went the other day for, for Father's Day. My, oh, yeah? fa- my father, brother, and I, we... I'm a big Tucker's fan, and I don't know how many times my dad has been, but he wanted to go there for Father's Day, so we decided to hit it up. Isn't that nice when we get to pick the thing? That, yeah, how except far? he had me He had me be the one to, uh, you can't do call ahead reservations there, so he had me be the one to show up like a half hour early and make sure <laughs> that we were on the list. And I told him, I said, if this was any day other than Father's Day, I would have been mad at you. <laughs> yeah. Uh, how far in advance did he tell you you wanted to go there, too? He told me like an hour, I arrived there an hour early. I told no, him I mean, I'd like, arrive 30 wh- minutes early. When did he say that's what he wanted to do for Father's Day? Like January? Oh, a few days prior. Oh, okay. Because <laughs> I'm one of those guys that's like like the day after Christmas. Just so you know, Sadie, here, <laughs> get ready for my day now. It's my turn. I get one day for me. The best farm to table or what is it? Fork to fork? It's farm to table, but I, I, I jokingly called it field to fork. Field to fork. Ooh. You're dark, Megan. Dark Megan. That's what we're going to start calling you now. Look out, Lewis. The chipmunk. No! And now, here's sports in 10 seconds with the sportsman. Red Sox sweep a doubleheader? Did the other team forget their gloves? That's your sports in 10 seconds with sportsman on Reinman in the Morning. Megan, what else is going on? Do you remember going to Yokins? You know, I went there one time when I was like three, and that's it. Wait, no way, same. <laughs> Oh, for real? I went, it closed in 2004, but I remember going at least once. Wow, it was open as late as 2004? Because yeah. I had that place, I didn't realize it was open that well, late. Well, I know that it was open at least into the early 2000s, because wow. I remember going there when I was but a wee child. Yeah, do you remember it being kind of dark in there? It was dark with like kind of mood, kind of lighting. I remember the walls, were they like champagne white, or do I have that wrong? It was fancy, uh, right? You know, I... I have one very, very foggy memory, and I don't trust it. Same here. I just remember I was dressed up. But someone shared a little throwback menu from Yokins. I don't know the precise year. You have to go on the Shark app to find out. A filet mignon was $1.58. Get out of here. I know. Everything was like $1 or $2, and I'm just like, I was born in the wrong time. Wow. Not less than 2 bucks for filet mignon? Yes, that's crazy. I know. No wonder. Life is expensive, John. The, the sign Is the sign still there? It's still yeah. there, right? Yeah. It is. So we do that here in New England, where we keep the signs up. Like, yeah. that's there. We're suckers for nostalgia, but we tear down the building. The Hilltop Steakhouse sign, that's still there. Oh, on yeah. On Saugus. Is that the big uh, cactus? Well, the cactus, yeah. 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 And so we just keep the signs everywhere. So, interesting. Yeah. Yeah, that's how messed up we are in New England with our road signs. We keep the signs up for businesses that aren't even there. Take a left at the Yokins, but there's empty, no Yokins. There's an empty lot. Yeah, it's not actually there, but take a left. Right there. right by the Five Guys, which, by the way, I love Five Guys. That's a very unrelated note, but I... You love Five Guys? Do they know? It's time for your News on the Nines with News Guy. It's rumored that Prince Harry and Meghan Markle are having money troubles. Yikes. One minute you're married at Buckingham Palace, the next you're applying at White Castle. (laughs) It's also rumored that Saudi Arabia could try and do business with the National Football League. When asked about working with a ruthless dictator, the crown prince said, Bill Belichick's not that bad. (laughs) 
Mick Jagger is selling his Florida home for $3.4 million. But it's a bit of a fixer-upper, you know, since everything's painted black. And that's your news on the nines. Now back to Reinman in the Morning. We've reached that point where I wrote something for the Shark App and Megan has questions. You're telling me that Stephen King is the, wait for it, king of dad jokes? Yeah. There's one right there. Ah. We've been talking about him a lot lately. I know. and uh, But this just had to come up. This was uh, for Father's Day, is that Stephen King's on Twitter. And so a lot of people that say, oh, I wish that I could, you know, he's got a book, but it takes a while. To go. You can read his writing every single day if you're still one of the remaining few in the wasteland <laughs> that is Twitter. Does, does he, I the don't even wasteland quite, that is Twitter. I don't understand like I don't I'm seeing people that I don't even follow. I don't know what's going on, but I know that Stephen King uh is on there and he does this thing where he intentionally tweets the most cringeworthy dad jokes possible. How frequently does he do this? He does it quite often, like a couple times a week. So nice. I went through for the Shark app and I compiled about a dozen of I don't want to call them my favorite dad jokes from Stephen King that deserve dissection. They deserve to be just studied and you you need to see this just to be aware that it's going on. So studying, huh? Yeah. So if if you if you're if you're weak in the stomach, please uh just just hold on here. But I'm gonna give you a couple, okay? Hit me. Here's the first one from Stephen King. There's a reason crabs never share. They're shellfish. <sighs> Terrifying. Oh my God. I mean, he really is the king of heart, but no, we, there's more. This one, I, I kind of support this one. The wedding was so beautiful that even the cake was in tears. Come on. Uh, yeah. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Okay. But this one, there's no defending this one at all. Mountains aren't just funny. They're hill areas. That is so bad. That is the worst joke I've heard I've in my ever, life. Yeah. Like, I, my, I, I literally love it. hurt. <laughs> I hurt so bad. Anyway, if you want to see some truly terrifying, probably the most horrifying writing I think Stephen King's ever done, go, wow. on, the, go on the Shark app and just see how long you can get. Uh, and then send me a message and tell me how many you got through before you tapped out. The scariest thing you've ever read. Not it. Yeah. No, not this other is, novels. Yeah. No, he's the scariest clown. Stephen King. When I was a kid growing up here in New England, I used to come home from Northampton School. I'd sit right at the counter. I'd get a bowl of Cinnamon Toast Crunch, and I'd open up the Boston Globe sports section. And I loved to read uh, this one particular columnist. I don't always agree with him. I don't know that any of us really do, but I love his writing. We connected uh, last month at, uh, I think, the second-to-last Celtics game at the Garden this past year. And um, he's going to be on the show tomorrow, joining me tomorrow morning. The one and only Dan Shaughnessy will be on Reinman in the Morning. So that should be interesting. Megan might want to buy some popcorn for that one because you'll have the biggest cynic in New Hampshire and perhaps the biggest cynic in New England. So Dan Shaughnessy joining me tomorrow, Reinman in the Morning. And I can't wait to talk to him. Um, Lots to talk about, Uh, not the least of which. Oh, boy. One of the Patriots, a guy by the name of uh, Jack Jones, I believe is his name. Yeah, he ran into a little bit of trouble. Was he in one of the planes that clipped the other plane? I bet he wishes he was. I don't think he made it that far. At uh, Logan Airport the other night, let's get an update. And now, here's Sports in 10 Seconds with the Sportsman. Well, at least one of the Patriots is playing the shotgun formation. That's your Sports in 10 Seconds with Sportsman on Ryman in the Morning. Hope you had a nice Father's Day if you celebrate, or just a nice Sunday in general. I do celebrate, and uh, I have a wonderful daughter. And uh, we went mini golfing, as we talk about so many times here on Ryman in the morning, to Captain's Cove Adventure Golf in Hampton. And she's really good. Okay, so here's what happened. She had a really off day. She just did not have it going on as a mini golfer. And kind of got frustrated early. I don't know if it was the cloudy kind of overcast weather or whatever, but just kind of had a bit of a mood. And I just got done talking to her. And I said, Sadie, uh, hey, you know, we can't always be good. You know, I gave her one of those Danny Tanner moments. The music came in and everything. I said, we, we can't always get what we want when we're mini golfing. And then I went after her and I got a hole in one. And that did not help things. It also didn't help that then I got two more holes in one. Here's my question for you. 
Was I wrong in doing that? I have Christina from Haverhill. Do you have kids, Christina? I don't. Okay. Uh, do you babysit? Do you have any nieces, nephews, anything? Um, I used to, but no. Okay. <laughs> I hope you mean you used to babysit. <laughs> I used to have some nieces yeah, and nephews. Yeah. No, and no. <laughs> if I'm playing mini golf with my six-year-old daughter, should I let her yeah. win or should I try and win and like show her who's boss? I think it's 50-50. I think you should start off easy, but at the end, I think you should just pull back show her that sometimes you don't win but sometimes yeah i think it's 50 50 tough to do when she's throwing her club into the water but i'll try my best it's time for your news on the nines with news guy president trump sat down for a disastrous interview with brett bear things got off to a bad start when trump said this bear looks just like a man (laughs) during a rally president biden told union workers you built america before adding but starship built this city (laughs) An eight-year-old boy in Louisiana is looking to become the world's youngest baseball umpire. Instead of ejecting managers, he just sends them to their room. And that's your news on the nines. Now back to Reinman in the Morning. My guest is a columnist for the Boston Globe, the recipient of the Baseball Writers of America Association Career Excellence Award, and the author of the wonderful book, Wish It Lasted Forever, Life with the Larry Bird Celtics. Welcome to Reinman in the Morning, Dan Shaughnessy. Mr. Shaughnessy, how's it going? Very nice to be here. I'm good. How are you? I'm great. It's an honor to speak with you. But before we talk sports, you're one of my favorite writers of all time, and you came up with one of my favorite expressions, which I use to this day. You once referred to someone as a, quote, sack of inner tubes. How did you come up with the expression sack of inner tubes, which I just love? I think that uh, this goes back. I'm so old. I'm pretty sure it's all in the family. The Norman Lear sitcom with Carol O'Connor and Sally Struthers and Rob Reiner. I think that um, Archie Bunker referred to his son-in-law, the meathead, <laughs> as a sack of. I think there was Gloria was 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 married to to Mike, and she was flirting with somebody at work or something who was a really handsome guy. And Archie said, "You know, meathead." This guy she works with makes you look like a sack of inner tubes. <laughs> and uh, I'm pretty sure that's so. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to assign that one to Norman Lear from like 50 years ago. <laughs> and who was it that you referred to, if you don't mind my asking? That could have been anybody. I mean, uh, <laughs> over the years, we've used, you know, we've used sack of doorknobs, sack of inner tubes. You know, sack is a good word in general. You wrote a column the other day about this, this terrible championship drought we're having here in New England. Yeah. Well, let me ask you this. Who do you think is going to be the team to, to break this slump? Well... I mean, we were so close with the Celtics and Bruins this spring, and you had the greatest regular hockey season of all time. But it feels like that window kind of closed on him a little bit. You know, we don't know if Bergeron's going to be back. You know, Krejci's going to be back. And uh, some guy, you know, Marchand's getting long in the tooth and some of those guys. So it feels like that window passed a little bit, and, and that sport is, you know, the playoffs are so hit or miss with mm-hmm. their sport. The Celtics, you would have to say, I mean, they were well positioned and um, still are because they have the same. It's a young core, so I think you'd have to say them out of the four at this point. Uh, it never seems to work out the way we think, but I'd say Celtics. It's a crucial off season for them, and you spent a lot of time around the great Red Hour back. So, what do you think Red would do with this Celtics team this summer? That's interesting. You know, see, Red would love Marcus Smart, which is not what everybody wants to hear, but. He liked guys that were do as many things as he does. Red would also really discourage the late game, you know, shots by Smart. He'd be like, Marcus, there's a reason you're open at the end. They want you to do it. <laughs> but I think he would try to clean that up. But he loves Marcus Smart, so I don't think he'd trade him. I don't think he'd want to pay Brown and Tatum the same way at the same time. So, And I just think the numbers to pay, you know, it's hard to keep up with the times, and Red really couldn't relate to that, I suppose. But Having all that payroll on, on those two guys, I'm not sure. But he loved talent, and you have talent. They just have a duplication of skill sets there, I think. And, and uh, you know, the positionless basketball and the 6'6", six, 6'7", six, 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 swing guys, and everybody's standing on the perimeter. It's it's the NBA today, yeah. but uh, Red would like the way Jokic plays a lot more than the way his guys play. The Boston Red Sox. Uh, Dan, do you see any path to success there, or should we just turn Fenway Park into like a spirit Halloween store at this mm. point? Well, as we speak, I'm feeling better about them. They swept the Yanks in a doubleheader, and they've they've won four in a row, and they're only a game and a half from getting out of last place, and I don't mm. know, three or four out of the wild card, and, and the pitching is, is coming around a little bit. You know, they got Kluber out of the rotation. They they know they're going without sale now, and but Bayo looks like a top-end guy if he stays healthy. And, uh, you know, Paxson has, he might be a trade chip or something, but he's, he's 
finally getting some production out of him. Bullpen's been on you know, a lot of unknown guys doing better. I think there it's the illusion of contention. Spend half as much and um, get in there for that last wild card, one of the six out of 15, and uh, we can win 84 and fool people into thinking we're still about winning when they're really not, in my view. Well, I hope one of these Powerball winners comes in and buys the team so that they get back to winning. I also hope they buy your book. Wish it lasted forever. Life with the Larry Bird Celtics. Thank you so much, Dan Shaughnessy. And again, everyone, go check out the book. It's a great summer read. Good gift as well. And now, here's Sports in 10 Seconds with the Sportsman. Remember when Teen Wolf played basketball? Where do you think he would have gone in the NBA draft? That's your Sports in 10 Seconds with Sportsman on Ryman in the Morning. Megan, what's going on? I am super hungry literally all the time. It's just a thing that happens. Wow, so you're hungry and you're cold all the time. I, In yes. Fact, as you look at me right now, Megan has sort of the, you have the Larry David going on right now. Let me tell you what Megan has on. Okay. You, Megan has like a, she has like a blazer, like a, like a, is that wool? It's a blazer and hoodie rolled okay, into so one. She like has, it's one piece of clothing. A, but it looks like you have a blazer and a hoodie and an undershirt underneath. Yes, you're dressed the, like and the Larry and the hoodie's over, over my head right now. <laughs> You're dressed like Larry David, and but like him, you're also always hungry. Like him, we both get hungry. And so, so I'm a huge burger fan, mm-hmm. especially when one is really hungry. Yep. Reader's Digest has spilled the tea on the best place in New Hampshire to get burgers. There's a best place. There is a best place according to Reader's Digest. Ah, so yeah. see if you agree or disagree. If I guess it. On the first guess. I'm not I'm not gonna tell you. You have Why to go, not? Yeah, because you have to go on the Shark app to find out. Red Arrow Diner. No, it's not Red oh, Arrow really? Diner. Oh really? It's not. They have the best wieners and beans. Shout, went, shout out to BNL. I went to Red Arrow Diner for the very first time uh, a couple months ago. Mm-hmm. And I got a clean plate club sticker. Oh, there you go. And I was so happy. <laughs> the I, clean it, plate club. That's that's literally oh what it gosh. says. And my friends and I, we went to the mall afterwards. We all wore our clean plate club stickers. That's awesome. Yeah. We wore them with pride. It was a worthwhile experience. But Reader's Digest says there's a place that's even better than the Red Arrow Diner. Yes. For burgers. You can yes. check it out on Unless the Shark Let us know app. if you agree with the findings or not. I already disagree, but I'm going to find that's out. That's just because you like being difficult. No, it's because I like the Red Arrow Diner. I also like the Red Arrow Diner. Well, you know something? Agree to agree. Cool. It's time for your News on the Nines with News Guy. A new study says that people with insomnia are likely to die sooner. Well, that'll help them sleep better. (laughs) Arnold Schwarzenegger said he would run for president if he were eligible. Or he said he would drink rum in the Orient with some edibles. It's hard to tell with him. (laughs) At a Blink-182 concert, Kourtney Kardashian held up a sign telling boyfriend Travis Barker she's pregnant with his baby. Even crazier, a woman at a Motley Crue concert held up a sign announcing she was not pregnant with anyone's baby. And that's your news on the nines. Now back to Reinman in the Morning. Megan, what else is going on? Pretty soon I'm going to be heading to Virginia to spend a few days with family. And Mm -hmm. it occurred to me that I should probably... Get him a little little souvenir from New England to bring down to them that could pass through TSA first off, but mm-hmm. that they would enjoy as well. Yes. But then I thought, I have no clue where to get said souvenir. So I decided to do some research on the good old World Wide Web to find some of the best souvenir shops in New Hampshire. Souvenir shops in New Hampshire? Yeah. Let's go to Hampton Beach. It's like every shop down there. Okay, souvenir. but that's like, that's Hampton Beach merch. I'm talking New Hampshire You have Hampshire such an attitude against merch. Hampton Beach. You're such a snob. I do have an attitude You're against Hampton Beach. Snob. You're a Portsmouth snob. I am snob. a Portsmouth That's snob. What you are. I That's actually, what you people I'm are. probably going to go downtown this weekend mm-hmm. and like go into some of the some of the local shops and businesses, oh, which yeah, you all so should good. support. Yeah, right. To find something. Let me ask you something. Unique and local, do, live have, and local. Let me ask you. <laughs> it's got to be live <laughs> and local. Let me ask you something. Do you have to put on a shirt to go into those shops? Yeah, you probably do. Right? Yeah. Not in my neighborhood, baby. No judgment. That's because it's along the beach. Right. That's what I'm saying. Again, it's Hampton Beach souvenirs. I'm not looking for Hampton Beach souvenirs. I'm looking for general all, New Hampshire souvenirs. Sorts, they have all sorts of stuff down there. Okay, well, maybe I haven't looked in a while. Uh, the best souvenir shops in New Hampshire. That is true, though. It's different, because if yeah, you're in the mountains, you get different stuff. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, exactly. And I, I thought about just going to, like, literally going to one of those stores in Logan Airport, 
but I'm just like, I can't explain it. I don't want just like a magnet or something. Those are what I collect when I travel. You know, but I want something a little, a little, a little more. I'm disappointing that you're bringing this up today because people really could have used it right before Father's Day. Thank you for the keychain, kids. And now, here's Sports in 10 Seconds with the Sportsman. Just to be safe, I always wear a cup on the seesaw. That's your Sports in 10 Seconds with Sportsman on Ryman in the Morning. We're at that point where I wrote something for the Shark app and Megan has questions. I'm honestly just going to let you have the floor with this one because you have been giggling like a schoolgirl over the, over this. So I'm uh-huh. just going to let you let you have the floor, John Reidman, and tell us the story of a particular bear. Well, there's this bear, and uh, he uh, munched on a guy's nuts. And that's it. Thanks for coming and listening to us on Reidman in the Morning, everybody. Yeah, wait, you get to do the <laughs> sign-off now? When yeah, did I that do. happen? Uh, I decided to change things up. No, the bears have been, they've been wilding, man. They've been all over the place. And in Sunapee, New Hampshire, that's actually a funny word too, isn't it? Sunapee? <laughs> I'm sorry. This whole, sto- this whole story puts me back in first grade. So in Su- Sunapee, New Hampshire, uh, there was a van and uh, these guys were doing some work and uh, one of the workers' lunch, uh, you know, it might have been your friend Lewis, uh, the, the, the woodchuck. He uh, had a the bag chip of monk. whatever. He had a bag of nuts in the front of the van, and the guys turn around, and uh, there's a bear in the van, and he's. <laughs> but he's not just in the van. He's sitting in the van with his arm placed on the door, like when you're just driving casually down the street, <laughs> and it they it looks like this bear is just gonna like van jack this vehicle, just take it out of there. And that would have been the funniest thing that's ever happened. And I said, I go, we have a new, it's the best story of all time. It's a bear trying to steal a car. He he ate his guy's nuts, Megan. Unbelievable. How dare he? How dare he? And uh, if you go out on the shark app, there's a wonderful picture and you can see this bear having a good time. And uh, that's what bears do best. Watch the video. Because when you watch the video, that's when you get to hear one of the workers exclaim. It's a freaking black bear eating Charlie's nuts. You might say it's very hilarious. All right, that's (laughs) enough. It's time for your news on the nines with News Guy. Well, it appears Biden's the hunter, the IRS the gatherer. (laughs) Yes, Hunter Biden was busted on tax evasion and gun charges. Who does he think he is? One of the patriots? (laughs) As part of his plea deal, Hunter Biden will avoid jail time. However, he will be sentenced to 18 months of hearing his dad tell a story. And that's your news on the nines. Now back to Reinman in the Morning. Megan, what's going on? I never stopped to think about this before, but when one goes on to the Shark app, you discover all kinds of new things. So have what are you, you ever... talking about? You never. That's the whole point of this segment, Megan. Of course. Well, ha- have you ever wondered what the most popular cuisine in New Hampshire is? Like oh. Chinese food, hmm. Japanese food, Thai food, Mexican food. Hmm. I'm American guessing it's, food. <laughs> uh, yeah, seafood. It's got to be seafood, right? Am oh I yeah. Right? There's there, there's that too. But I mean, I'm not going to tell you. You have to go on the Shark app to find out. Wait, but is, actually, this, is this a like a genre of food or a specific a dish? A genre. Oh, okay. A genre. It's got to be seafood. Food. But I don't know. I feel weird saying you that. You think, like, you know, the thing about seafood is that's the answer you would expect. Right. But is that the answer that's necessarily true? Boy, I don't know. Keeping you on me, your toes here. Hmm. You've got me thinking. What's your favorite seafood dish while we're on the subject of seafood? Uh, you know, it used to be fried clams, but like it's fried food. It makes me feel all like, ah, like my fingers and everything swell up a little bit. It's like a lot of swell. salt. It's a lot of salt. It's a lot of salt in the fried clams. Okay. So I've become more of a lobster roll kind of guy. Ooh. Yeah. I never, I've never been a huge lobster fan, but I think that's slowly changing. I think that, you know, as you get older, your taste buds change. Mm-hmm. So I think that I might... I can do like a lobster roll. I can do lobster bisque. But in the past, when I've gotten like a lobster, I'm like, what the heck is this? You I gotta, don't enjoy this. You got to go up to Maine and get that world's biggest lobster roll and see what you can do. See if you can it, put that thing away. Okay. Food eating competitions. I've never wanted anything to do with those. Have I, you ever been in one? No. I have no interest in being in one. I hate that. I can't picture you being in a food eating contest. No. Well, first off, I'd lose. Second off, I'd make myself sick which neither of those things sound appealing to me so i'm gonna have to pass if you would like to do that i will i'll watch no that's all right (laughs) i will be i will i will be entertained 
Nah, I'm already busy enough eating my words. And now, here's sports in 10 seconds with the Sportsman. Red Sox win six in a row. Well, guess I got to learn their names. That's your sports in 10 seconds with Sportsman on Rhineman in the Morning. It's summer solstice, longest day of the year, allegedly. I'll tell you another day that feels long to me, my birthday. You know, my birthday's March 15th. Ah, it's right in the middle. I'm happy to share it with, like, other cool people. Brett Michaels, D. Snyder, folks like that. I'll tell you something that drives me nuts about the birthday. The cake. Why do we go through the charade of hiding the cake? And no one can mention it. You go into the room and say, hey, is, is, does anyone know what time we're having the cake? Do we know when we're having the cake? Don't say it in front of him. He doesn't know. Yes, after 40 years. I haven't figured it out yet. Patrick from Newmarket, what feels like the longest day of the year to you? Somebody other than me doesn't say Valentine's Day. They're a lying liar that lies. <laughs> it does feel long, right? Because either way, even if you're with somebody, oh my gosh, so much can go wrong, right? Uh, you know, you're going, did I get enough? Did I not get enough? Are they happy? Are they unhappy? Yeah. You can't gauge by their face. Everybody's smiling. And then if you're alone, it's happy sad day, happy single awareness day. I'd rather go on a binge of watching movies of my least favorite actor than be on Valentine's Day. Who's your least favorite actor? Ben Stiller. Really? How come? As Family Guy said, he's the mutant offspring of funny people. <laughs> Well, there's someone who won't be coming on the show, but you know what, Patrick? I'm glad you call if you, in. If you had him on the show, I wouldn't. I wouldn't not listen. I'd just be, you know, st- I'd be glaring at the radio. Tell you what, if I have him on the show, you have to call in. I'll call in, and I'll just, you know. Then we'll have a new longest day of the year. Yeah, yeah, it'll be funny. It'll be funny. <laughs> now on Rhyme in the morning, it's what's up on the Shark app with Megan, the Shark's own app and website guru. Megan, what else is going on? I am super excited about this, but you can take a look inside Tom Brady's apartment in Florida. Really? Priced at a whopping $60,000 a month. See, You can see some pictures of the inside. See uh-huh. how the, the other half lives, if you will. Does it have Gronk's bunk beds in there? Of course, for their yeah. sleepovers. Yeah, of course. So he still has his apartment, even though, do you think he's coming back? He's coming back, right? He's going to come back I'm again. done even trying to guess. Is that why he's guess. got an apartment? I'm done trying to guess. It's so it, weird to say Tom Brady's apartment, though. That's such a weird thing. Okay, but you know it's like one of five homes he has. People, it's unbelievable. My father's work recently took him and some colleagues to Florida. They were like whining and dining him unbelievably. He was telling me how he was aboard this yacht and he was seeing the homes of like Usher and Shaq and Tom Cruise. Like oh, they're yeah. million dollar mansions. And I'm just like, it's it's unfathomable to me. Like, you know, I just, Tom, I just Brady's, like to... Tom Brady's apartment is 60000 a month. I'm just like... That's that's so much it's money. It's so weird that it's like his apartment. I just like to picture when you were just talking, like a, a Tom Cruise's house and Shaq's house, I like to picture that's the same house. It's the, the same house? Just like, it's like a buddy comedy. Just Shaq every day. Like is a like, buddy cop kind of movie? You want me to show you the money? Do you want the money? Do you want me to show you the money? It's time to stop. <laughs> you had me at hello. It's classic hits for the Seacoast, 1021, 1053, The Shark. Or is it 1021, 1053, The Shack? We'll be right back. With more. We'll be right back with more Ryman in the morning. It's time for your news on the nines with News Guy. President Trump's trial will be held over the summer, so I guess he can stop working on his beach body. <laughs> Bernie Sanders has launched an investigation into workplace injuries at Amazon, while Bernie's neighbors asked him to close the windows so his voice doesn't activate their Alexas. <laughs> A new study says artificial intelligence can predict hit songs with 97% accuracy. In related news, a drone just took out Nickelback. And that's your news on the nines. Now back to Reinman in the Morning. We reached that point where I wrote something for the Shark app and Megan has questions. As someone who grew up playing Slenderman, I was really excited to Wait, see that. Hold on have... a second. You that's a game? You played Slenderman? It's I thought a, this it's was a video just like... game. Oh, okay. I or thought it, it was, was just, a video game. But I thought, of it, don't people really get scared of this? Like, they believe in the Slender Man, right? Isn't I mean, that a thing that, like, there's been some, like, I don't want to get yeah, too dark, but, like, yeah. there have been some scary things that, like, yeah. kid, but like, it's based people, on a, a video game. Okay. Um, but as you were saying, wrote something for the Shark app. Yeah. It's New England Slender Man. Um, it it kind of is. And it's from the 1930s. It was, uh, it's in a town in Massachusetts, and they called it the Black Flash. Oh, boy. You got to go to the Shark app and see what town it was. 
And as one of those like phenomenons, just like a certain monkey here in New Hampshire, that's all we'll say. That's all we'll say. The Black Flash would jump out and scare people, and it started with kids. But then grown-ups started saying that they were being pursued by the Black Flash. This this super tall being, all dressed in black. It reminded me of the Creeper from the Jeepers Creepers movies. Jeez. Yeah. You know what happened is the Black Flash, finally, it went away. It stopped bothering people. It did good instead of evil. And it used to hit the jukebox with its Black Flash elbow. And then it would say that famous saying. No. Come on. Okay. We'll go to the Shark app if you want to read about the Black Flash, this mysterious creature in Massachusetts. Or if you want to be like Fonzie, say. Hey. And now, here's Sports in 10 Seconds with the Sportsman. Is Wen Ben Yama the top NBA draft pick or the band that sang Tub Thumping? That's your Sports in 10 Seconds with Sportsman. I asked you, what are you looking forward to now that summer is finally here in New England? Jane and Exeter. Well, it would be nice if it was some warm weather and going out on a boat would be my first choice. Warren in Rochester. Uh, I'm hoping for a little less rain and uh, a little bit more camping and going out and enjoying the outdoors. But you know what? Rain makes it exciting, though, at least, right? You can get together with a friend, reenact that scene from The Notebook, you know? (laughs) Raymond in Seabrook. Standing outside without it raining. (laughs) That seems to be a theme. It's time for your News on the Nines with News Guy. Well, I guess I'll be canceling my picnic at the Hindenburg Field. (laughs) President Biden referred to Chinese President Xi Jinping as a dictator. Of course, when I heard him say she's a dictator, I assumed he meant Martha Stewart. (laughs) It's reported that tennis judges may soon be replaced by robots, which explains why today I saw John McEnroe yelling at a Roomba. (laughs) And that's your news on the nines. Now back to Reinman in the Morning. You know, on Tuesday, I had Dan Shaughnessy from the Boston Globe here on Reinman in the Morning, and Dan knew the great Red Auerbach very well from all his time covering the Celtics back in the 1980s when they had Larry Bird and all those guys. And I asked Dan, I said, hey, heading into the summer, how would Red Auerbach handle retooling and fixing this Celtics team? Here's what Dan had to say. That's interesting. You know, see, Red would love Marcus Smart, which is not what everybody wants to hear, but he liked guys that were do as many things as he does. Red would also really discourage the late game, you know, shots by Smart. He'd be like, Marcus, there's a reason you're open at the end. They want you to do it. <laughs> but I think he would try to clean that up, but he loves Marcus Smart, so I don't think he'd trade him. Well, Brad Stevens disagreed. Uh, Marcus Smart traded to the Memphis Grizzlies uh, while most of us slept last evening. Celtics getting back Kristaps Porzingis. The unicorn, as they call them. So I get to tell my daughter that, hey, the bad news is the guy with the cool green hair, he's gone. But the Celtics get a unicorn. How exciting is that? And now, here's Sports in 10 Seconds with the Sportsman. Is Porzingis the guy the Celtics got? Or what Sheldon says on the Big Bang Theory? That's your Sports in 10 Seconds with Sportsman on Ryman in the Morning. Megan, what's going on? We have a new restaurant of sorts that is joining the food scene in Portsmouth, and it's called Hearth Food Garden, and it's basically described on our Shark app as it has it's like a space it's like a multi-purpose kind of space. I can't even really isn't describe it, it. Isn't it kind of isn't it the the Faneuil Hall kind of place? It's in Portsmouth. It's gonna it's, it's gonna be a, a food hall. It's gonna be a food yeah. hall. So there's yeah, gonna be a bunch of different things, but there's also gonna be. Nights of dance, storytelling, and teaching, according to the Shark app. I don't really know the details beyond that, but that sounds like a really cool community sort yeah. of thing. I think I've heard about this. I know a couple of people who've gone there. Yeah, it's cool. Yeah. And it, it, was, it took a while to open up, right? And then yeah. it finally did. It, it's exciting. I, I really, I'm a, I believe that we live in a very isolated world, so any chance that people have to have community and get to know the people that live in the area is awesome. So I, the Hearth I Food Garden. Yes. So they have storytelling. I don't know what that means. I'll tell you what it means. Okay, hear me out. Here we go. You show up there with Lewis. You're, you're, uh, you're what is he, a woodchuck? Is he a beaver? Sure. I actually did see a uh, groundhog on my property recently. Oh, well, there you go. I you did. bring them both. Well, well what is Lewis again? He's, he's a- Lewis is a chipmunk. Chipmunk. You bring Lewis and you bring him in there and you set up like you're doing a ventriloquist act, right? No. And then- you drink the water, and then Lewis starts going, ding, 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 and everyone goes, oh, my God, it's a, it's a real I'm done with ferret you. or whatever it is. 
And then that's your that's your story. You put on a show at the Hearth Garden. I my mother came to visit recently and uh-huh. and she met Lewis. Oh really? He made an appearance to say hello. Did he ask for your hand? <laughs> Honestly. Did he ask permission? Honestly, probably cuter than cuter than most of the other options out there. So I, all right, I'd consider it. Megan's gonna go finish drawing her Kathy comic strip. In the meantime, check out the Portsmouth, uh, the Hearth Food Garden, right? Sure. On the Shark app. Okay. So lots of kids for the Seacoast. One hundred two one one zero five three. The Shark. We'll be right back with more Reinman in the morning. It's time for your news on the nines with News Guy. Happy birthday to Cindy Lauper, who turned 70 years old, which explains her new song, Girls Just Wanna Watch Wheel of Fortune and Fall Asleep Reading a Book. Duncan is introducing new menu items like the Caramel Chocoholic Donut and the Salted Caramel Cold Brew. Honeydew Donuts also hopes to add something new, customers. Officials have approved the sale of chicken prepared in a lab. You'll know it's a lab-grown chicken when they ask if you want a wing, a thigh, or an ear. And that's your news on the nines. Now back to Reinman in the Morning. Megan, what else is going on? There's nothing better than seeing viral videos of kids just being hilarious in their own creative ways. Like the Turtles kid. He's the best. <gasps> I, I, I like, like turtles. turtles. Yeah. So what's, I, I love that kid. What's the newest one on the shark app? The newest one on the shark app is a couple of young boys were with their father, grandfather, a parental figure, and they were seeing a baseball game. Oh, right. And yeah. <laughs> they got the foul ball. And now I know next to nothing about baseball, but isn't the rule of thumb that if you catch it, you get to keep you it? Get to keep the foul ball. Yes. Well, um, one of these one of these young gentlemen decided that he was going to do a good deed because that ball didn't belong to him, and so right. he takes the ball and throws it back on the field, uh-huh. much to his older brother's absolute dismay. Ah. Uh. <laughs> Oh my god. And gosh. he starts crying. Who starts crying? The little the old, kid? No, or the, the older, older br- brother because oh. his younger one threw the ball back when he oh, wasn't wow. supposed to. And, and then, he's crying into the shoulder of the guy with them. And the story does have a happy ending. If you go on the Shark app, you can find out more. But man, this kid, you, your heart just goes out to him, you know? People should pay attention to the dad's response because I saw that he was getting praised a lot for the way That's he good. handled things. I would like to think. I'm going to work on that. I would like to think I would handle things the right way if Sadie threw a ball back onto the field. That said, she has such an arm on her, I'm afraid it would hurt one of the players. <laughs> we would just have to run. Uh, well, check it out on the Shark app. And while you're there, check out the article about Bill Burr doing commentary for a Red Sox game. And now, here's Sports in 10 Seconds with the Sportsman. They should let Bill Burr call the Little League World Series. That's your Sports in 10 Seconds with Sportsman on Ryman in the Morning. We reached that point where I wrote something for the Shark app and Megan has questions. You recently came up with a very interesting comparison between two of the most famous true crime tales arguably of all time tell me more we just had an infamous anniversary here in the u.s Mm -hmm. uh it was the i believe 29th anniversary of the oj simpson white bronco chase and right here in new england we have uh, a case of our own one lizzie borden and for many years there have been comparisons drawn between those two cases because they were both like in their own eras, media sensations, and it was a big, you know, scandalous thing. Big and thing, yeah. Yeah, it was a big to-do. There was tons of reporters and, and all that and uh, at everyone's residences and everyone involved. But I started kind of going through, and there's a couple parallels I knew about. But what's interesting is if you go to the Shark app and you read the story of Lizzie Borden, the way things wound up for her compared to or parallel to one O.J. Simpson Wow, is all I can say. I actually went, no way. When I saw uh, how she finally kind of got racked up on some charges. Jeez. And it's just, you know, it's like we were talking to someone in the office and I said, I think it's one of these things where you get away with a terrible crime and then you're like, oh, I can do anything. 
And it's like, no, you can't. Yeah. You're probably definitely going to get caught the next time because they're going to be after you. But uh, you're not that familiar with the OJ. You're more familiar with Lizzie Borden, right? Uh, yes. I, I, you're a historical I wouldn't, person. I wouldn't call myself an expert on either. I'm more familiar with Lizzie Borden. Well, though. you know what? This could this could cost me some listeners. You are the one who chose to people. highlight my lack of knowledge on that. Well, This is a you problem, not me. Here's the thing. I'm just here. All these years later, okay? Despite all the documentaries, despite all the miniseries, despite all the evidence, I still think OJ did it. It's time for your News on the Nines with News Guy. Twitter CEO Elon Musk and Facebook CEO Mark Zuckerberg have agreed to a fight. The projected winner in Hellers. It's rumored that CNN is up for sale, but I'm not sure if I believe it because I heard it on CNN. NFL star Aaron Rodgers told a reporter that taking psychedelic drugs has had amazing effects on his life. In response, the reporter was actually just a mannequin. And that's your news on the nines. Now back to Reinman in the Morning. Megan, what's going on? How would you like to go to a Red Sox game for free? Eh. Apparently there's a field level bar underneath the bleachers. Where you can grab a drink and watch the game. I'm not like I. Wait I, a second. Hold on a sec. You get, you don't have to pay for a ticket to go to this bar. Are you sure about that? Correct. No. There's a place where you can go to a bar and just go in there and get food, get wings, whatever, and you're in the park. I thought you had to pay to go into this place. Not to my knowledge. I mean, did I stump? I mean, did I stump the Meg? You did not. I am okay. not responsible for. Our, I'm not responsible <laughs> I'm for. The messenger. Don't, don't, don't shoot the messenger here. Okay. But okay. I, it, it seems like a legitimate thing, and That's you. So weird. Yeah. Well, I mean, I guess when you think about it, you have to pay to like get there, and you have the to co- pay there for food. There must be a cover food. or something. Yeah. Yeah. So like, there are obviously fees of sorts. You're not just gonna. Okay. But it, it's still like it, that's really. Really fascinating to me. It seems it like is. something that should be more widely known, and maybe it is, and I'm I'm just not really involved in the sports world, so maybe... Well, go check it. Well, you made that one basket when you were a kid, so don't forget that. I did. I, I never forgot that. I was also um, on the jump rope team. That's right. I won You're several world, world medals class and ribbons. Jump roper. Of course. Uh, go to the Shark app, check out this bar, where I guess you can go and just like watch the game as it's happening at Fenway, but you know what it reminds me of is when I was a kid uh, up in Toronto... At what used to be called Sky Dome, now it's Rogers Center. There's a hotel, and so you could, if you were staying in a hotel in one of the rooms, you could just look out your window and watch the game for free. Cool, right? That is cool. But if you can look out your window and see the game, science then dictates people can then watch in your window. Correct. Uh, and long story short, there pass. was once a Red Sox Blue Jays game where uh, people got past third base without actually playing in the field. And now, here's Sports in 10 Seconds with the Sportsman. With the 69th pick in the NBA draft, your mama selects me. That's your Sports in 10 Seconds with Sportsman on Ryman in the Morning. Megan, what else is going on? Apparently, there are a lot of celebrities that you could potentially run into in Maine this week for various reasons. Really? Yeah, apparently there's a lot going on up in the Pine Tree State. Who knew? They're the Pine Tree State. The yeah, the Pine Tree. Pine Pine Tree. Pine Tree. Oh, yes, I I like said the Pine Treat. I was, what I is a very... what is a Pine Treat? <laughs> I don't know. It's a good. We should think of that though. The pine Tree State. Anyway, getting back on track. <laughs> yeah. Well, well, a couple of them are Patrick Dempsey and Tim Wakefield. Those are the ones that I am revealing. I'm not choosing to reveal anymore. Yes, two very similar celebrities. Very of similar. Of course. Level celebrity. <laughs> Very similar, similar people, similar career paths. I mean, hey, most of the most of the people you, listed here. You call here, the talent agency. Can I get Patrick Dempsey? No, but we do have knuckleballer Tim Wakefield. I mean, who I love, by the way. I'm just I know saying nothing two, about him. They're I'm two not very different celebrities. Dempsey's from uh, Grey's Anatomy, right? Do I have that right, or is he lost? You know, I feel horrible because I'm pretty sure he was in the Enchanted movie with Amy Adams, and that's Grey's the Anatomy, only right? thing I recognize him. From. Was he Mc, McSteamy or McDreamy? He's one of those guys. Probably McDreamy because he's beautiful. Oh, well, I know Tim Wakefield. He's a world champ for the Red Sox. So those are two people. They're going to be up in Maine. Yeah. Why? What's going on? Give me one of the things going on in Maine. I do know there's a like a celebrity golf tournament happening. Oh, there. oh, Wakefield's yeah. great at golf. So I would assume that 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 could very well be why he's there. I'm. Interesting guy. Do you know that Tim Wakefield, he was a third baseman and he struggled as a hitter. And then he, as right before his career was going to end, he goes, oh, you know, hey, I can actually throw a knuckleball. And he threw a couple pitches and cut two. He's like the most famous knuckleball pitcher 
of my lifetime. So isn't that a That's cool story? That's awesome. So maybe you run into him in Maine. Go, maybe. Go to the Shark App. Find go out, hang out up there. Find out where he's going to be. Allison from Fremont, you wanted to talk to me about Patrick Dempsey. Now, is he McDreamy or McSteamy? He's McDreamy. Mark Sloan, I don't know what his actor name is, but Mark Sloan was McSteamy. And and okay. wh- why McDreamy and McSteamy? What's the difference? Um. Well, one is hot and one is dirty. <laughs> <laughs> Gotcha. Okay. It's time for your news on the nines with News Guy. Today is take your dog to work day, which means tomorrow is find a new cleaning company day. (laughs) After several attacks, a theory states that orca whales may be out to injure humans in the water. That might be true. Today, one of them beat me up in the shower. Police in Florida had to rescue a horse from a swimming pool. Sounds like somebody really misunderstood the term water polo. And that's your news on the nines. Now back to Reinman in the Morning. And you know, it's funny we bring up Patrick Dempsey because as luck would have it, Patrick Dempsey is actually going to be at the Music Hall in downtown Portsmouth this coming Sunday, June 25th at 5 p.m. with Robin Roberts from Good Morning America. And they're going to be in conversation. It's called Finding Your Purpose. It's going to be really cool. It's Maine native and actor Patrick Dempsey and Good Morning America host Robin Roberts are going to have an intimate conversation about dreams, courage, lost resilience, and finding your flow. And then after the conversation, audience members will be invited to submit questions for Patrick Dempsey to answer and include their names on the question so he'll be able to speak to you directly, maybe even you, Allison, from Fremont. And this is very cool. 70% of all ticket prices are a tax-deductible donation to the Dempsey Center, founded by Patrick Dempsey, which offers comfort, connection, community, and choice to people impacted by cancer, all at no cost. So for more information, visit themusichall.org. And you know what? I think I'll see you there. So very cool. Now on Rhyming in the Morning. It's What's Up on the Shark app with Megan, the shark's own app and website guru. We're going to talk about something I wrote for the shark app, but it's so crazy because I was just telling Megan off air, uh, there's a couple comedians for whom I've written. Uh, Mm -hmm. They may have hosted The Tonight Show, uh, respectively. And I was saying how each of them have very funny jokes about someone they can't tell because that person passed away and that person's Michael Jackson. I'm not going to say what the jokes are. So then... I said, let's go over something I wrote for the Shark app. And Megan, what story did you pick? Well, apparently we owe a thank you to Michael Jackson. I I would like you to tell the (laughs) class why that is. But it's just funny where it's like, anyway, we can't talk about that. Let's open the mic. And then you hold up the thing. And I'm like, what? No way. I have to talk about him now. Okay. The late Michael Jackson, however you feel about him. He's indirectly responsible for the Patriots dynasty. And you got to go to the Shark app and find out why. But long story short, there were some financial failings of a previous Patriots ownership group, and it was kind of Michael Jackson's fault. And they were going to be, they were the original Kraft family, and it didn't work out for them. And mm-hmm. then that's kind of why things went the way they did, and we have these six Super Bowls. Funny how that works. It, it's all because of Michael Jackson. All because of Michael Jackson. Kind of. (laughs) Yeah. Good. Bad. So-so. We have our button. Cool. I think. But yeah, go check it out on the Shark app. It's uh, Classic Hits for the Seacoast. 1021-1053 The Shark. We'll be right back with more Reinman in the morning. NBA draft was last night and not really that exciting, but I will say there were some very, very interesting names. Names of the players. Now, the number one pick was this guy from France who they say is like the next big thing. His name is Victor Wembenyama. Victor Wembenyama. For real, I just got used to saying Giannis Antetokounmpo. Now I got to learn Victor Wembenyama. Ah, my jaw. It hurts. Then there was another guy, Scoot Henderson. Wasn't he in Johnny Carson's band? This is my favorite thing, though. Picks four and five were Amen Thompson and Osir Thompson. That's right. Last night, the Thompson twins were drafted in the NBA. <laughs> hold, don't hold them close, guys. You got to give them some space. No hand checking. But there's one name that really stood out. And if you saw his wardrobe, I don't think he minds standing out. Gentleman's name is Grady Dick. That's right. The Toronto Raptors drafted a guy named Grady Dick. 
Let's get a little more information. And now, here's Sports in 10 Seconds with the Sportsman. Is Grady Dick a basketball player or a porno star from the 30s? That's your Sports in 10 Seconds with Sportsman on Ryman in the Morning. The weekend's here. Let's go to the movies. I'm Charlie Butters, and it's time for your Friday flicks. Out this weekend is No Hard Feelings, where Jennifer Lawrence dates an introverted teenager. My cousin tried that once, and he got to meet Chris Hansen from Dateline. Out on demand is The Country Club, about two teenage girls playing in a golf tournament. Or as Saudi Arabia calls that, science fiction. In theaters is Shiro's, about four women who experience a violent, hellish nightmare. Sorry, I'm being told that's actually a description of Kim Cattrall reuniting with the cast of Sex and the City. I'm Charlie Butters, and remember to keep an eye on the screen and a hand in... Charlie's nuts. (laughs)